Dino Costa is on your radio now. Dino Costa. <laughs> It's Thursday across North America and around the world. And you're listening to the worldwide Dino Costa radio experience on Sirius XM's Mad Dog Radio. Well, this is hour number three on a Thursday. Across, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not worthy. Oh, I love you all too. Thank you for being here on a Thursday with me. Hour number three, looking to rock and roll in the last two hours of a Thursday show. Final two hours of the week. What are you going to do? The right, you, you got to go tomorrow. You got to go Saturday. You got to go Sunday. All without Dino on your radio. And then what? I'll be back next Monday. Lord willing, that is. I'll be back next Monday. Kaplan, Mendes, uh, speaking of rocking and rolling, doing a great job in New York. Mr. Joshua. Yes, sir. You still awake? You want to get out of here an hour early? I'll let you go. That's okay. Oh, my on-site broadcast engineer, Mr. Joshua, doing his, just doing your thing, baby. You're just doing your thing. And I'm just doing my thing. Or is it thang? Man, Kaplan, I got to tell you, the, uh, you know, usually uh, I have no compulsion to want to take part in it. We've got this this uh mad dog radio facebook page yeah and you know i mean we we just we, we don't play with that but yesterday and last night i had the night off and i took the family out to eat and uh decided to send you a message to to, to give to the people there that, that frequent the mad dog radio facebook page and boy did we have fun with those people uh 24 hours ago we're having just as much fun with those people today as we were yesterday Yeah, the fans love it I mean, they, let me tell you something about these people. It is, it's, like, it's like taking candy from a baby. I mean, it is, it's, like, it, it's like throwing out the chum to sharks who have not eaten in, in like, you know, two months. And they take the bait, and the answers are spectacular. We put up, did you see the question? Read the question we put up uh, last night and some of the other follow-up questions and comments that we had. Go to that thread. And... Uh, the, <laughs> This is just amazing with with these people on the Mad Dog Facebook page. The the kick that I'm getting, I mean, you want to talk about, I'm, I'm getting a hard on from some of the responses of these people. Uh, you know, especially, and I love, listen, as much as I love the compliments and the, the, the people that are pro Dino fans, you can't beat people who hate my guts. I mean, you can't beat their responses. They are, I, you want to talk about priceless I want to employ some of these people to consistently write about me on the uh, on the Mad Dog Radio Facebook page, if I could. What what was the question that we originated with uh, 24 hours ago? Yeah, the original question was, uh, Dino Costa wishes to thank everyone who participated in yesterday's Facebook question. With that said, Dino wishes to know, what is the most important to you as a show listener? A, original content provided by the host. B, guests. C, phone callers. Only one choice is permitted. Lastly, Dino really digs you guys no matter how you feel about them. And he looks forward to hosting shows for many years to come on Sirius XM Radio. Okay, now now read some of the initial responses here, and the names of the people. Oh yeah, I got to back it up. There are a lot here. How many responses did we get? Uh, I think we're up to eighty three on this. Eighty three. Yeah. <laughs> over over a nothing question. Yeah. Eighty three <laughs> responses. Uh, oh man. Let's see here. Uh, Nick Sanford says, "I look forward to your show every day. I love the original content." And then a lot of people answering A for the uh, show's opinion from the host. Uh, well, where do I find this? Let me get on the uh, Facebook, which I never go to. But where is it? That's uh, Mad Dog Radio Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash MDR on Sirius XM. All right. Hold on. Now I'm looking for yesterday's question. Cedric Ferguson thinking uh, the page has been hacked. Who said that? Cedric Ferguson says uh, Mad Dog Radio <laughs> Facebook page has been hacked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is great. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, this is today's question. You uh, scroll do you, down. Yeah. yeah, okay. Is it on the right-hand side or the left-hand uh, side? I got it on the right. You got it on the right. Hang on. Is it below the uh, picture, that stupid picture of Babchick? Yeah. Right oh, here right. it is. Okay, I see it here now. Right. Dino Costa wishes to thank everyone who participated in yesterday's Facebook question. With that said, Dino wishes to know what is most important to you as a show listener. A, original content provided by the host. B, guests. C, phone callers. Only one choice is permitted. 
Lastly, Dino really digs you guys no matter how you may feel about him, and he looks forward to hosting shows for many years to come here on Sirius XM Radio. Oh, okay, so uh, 16 people like the question, by the way. Did you see that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Barry Turnbull said, I never said Dino was doing the hacking. Um, oh, and then I asked a few other questions within the thread itself, didn't I? You did. What did I ask? Uh, let's see. Dino is currently on his way with his family to Applebee's. Seems Dino cannot make up his mind, and he'd appreciate your help. Should he order the sizzling double-barrel whiskey sirloins, <laughs> or should he try shrimp and Parmesan sirloin? Dino appreciates all of your intentions uh, and much appreciated help. God be with you. Yeah, so we asked all that, and you can go on the Facebook page and check it out. And then we, we, we decided to toy with these people again today because we just we can't, we can't resist. Yeah, it's too much fun. Uh, you, just, you just can't resist, can you? No. It's just it's, it's way too much fun. So um, then we asked the question here. Uh, Dino Costa, this is for today. Dino Costa is thrilled to be back on the air today, broadcasting from his state-of-the-art studios in Cheyenne, Wyoming, across America and around the world online. The sports doctor wishes to ask you all this question. How much of a bummer is it? To tune into the Dino's, the Dino. <laughs> it's like the Donald. How much of a bummer is it to turn into the Dino's show on any given day, only to find out that it's not Dino hosting the show, but instead a guest host filling in for him? Dino thanks you in advance for any answer you may provide, and he wishes you all a safe and happy Thursday. So we got 43 comments from what I can see up there right now. Correct? Yeah, that's not bad. And then we just asked a new question we did. a couple of minutes ago. Hold we on, did. where is it? I want to find this one. Okay, here it is. This is the newest Facebook question. How many responses so far? Uh, looks like maybe seven responses so far. Seven responses. It's okay. only been up for 12 minutes. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me refresh my page here. Uh, I love these people. I love you, especially those of you that listen to me and can't stand my guts. You are, you are my most uh, valuable uh, listener out there. Dino Costa is a man of many words, thoughts, ideas, visions. He certainly has taken the art form of sports radio to a level it has never seen previously. Dino wishes to know that if he consented to doing six hours of his show each and every day, would this be something you would look forward to? Or should Dino think about doing as many as eight, nine hours a day? The Dino thanks you in advance uh, for your point of your pointed responses, and he wishes you all Godspeed now and forever. Okay, so let me let me read some of these now. We got a couple more comments here. Uh, what, what what does the first guy say there? I have no idea what he's what saying. What is that? Right I, I don't even know what that Mean means. Before flames, yeah, it doesn't doesn't make any sense. Uh, Cedric Ferguson, uh, you d- you dumbass, you uh, <laughs> says that the, uh, the 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 Facebook page has been hacked. <laughs> Fucking genius. Uh, Todd Patrick says I'd say let him do three hours and Bill Leckis for three. John Golden, hell no! I've never heard of such a gas bag. Jesus, praise him, John. Dino, you need constant fawning from your legion of minions. If you want your ego stroked so badly, you get a hooker. Uh, Barry Turnbull says, if he does that many hours, he would need his own channel. And Barry obviously taking the question very seriously. <laughs> He's programming <laughs> a new channel for you. My goodness. I mean, <laughs> how do you take this seriously? <laughs> Al Green says, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. By then, my day is done. And Jason Mummert says, he reminds me of Mike North, formerly of the score in Chicago. He's different but runs along the same track. I've missed someone like this on the radio since North went off the air. I love him. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But we, we, we love having fun with these people on Facebook. And uh, what's, 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 more, uh, what's more humorous to me, Kaplan, is how people take these questions and they think we're serious. Yeah, they put some thought to their <laughs> And they're answers. answering it in a serious way. Yeah. Amazing. Um, uh, Joe Pignatello just, did you see what he said? No, where's that? <laughs> Fuck it. Stay on all night. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe I'll commandeer the station here today and tonight. Stay on until uh, the morning show tomorrow. Speaking of morning shows, I want you to find this audio for me. Uh, the Dennis and Callahan show on uh, WEEI in Boston. Uh and Jerry Callahan is a is a huge fan of this show, and it, Jerry might be listening to the show right now. And did you see? I want you to find Howard Stern. Howard the other day uh, leveled the Dennis and Callahan show in Boston because now why doesn't Howard do the same thing? Now listen, I said uh, I think it was last week. I said that in terms of uh, pure content and doing the show in a solo role, I kicked the shit out of Howard. And but that, that, that seemingly never gets back to Howard. I don't. Do you send some of the audio to Gary? I the do. Boy Gary. Yeah. I mean, I would love Howard to take this show on and 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 rip me to pieces. 
But uh, he ripped it. Did you find it? Yeah, I got it. You do have it. Okay, yeah. so here's listen to this. This is now they do a sports show, W E E I in Boston. This is the they're behind in the ratings, by the way. Yeah, they're getting killed. Yeah, they're getting killed by that new upstarts. I can't believe that. My goodness, what is going on with the great W E E I? That's like a station coming into the market in New York and and you know bludgeoning W F A M. And and of course that's never going to happen unless some station in New York had the the, the common sense to, to to recruit me. But uh, here is Dennis and Callahan, and here is Howard Stern talking about, on the Stern Show the other day, here's Howard talking about the Dennis and Callahan show after Dennis and Callahan mentioned Howard on their show. Check this out. Uh, what is this? Uh, it's two asshole morning guys making fun of me. I'll play you that. All these morning guys that... Uh, Why are they picking on us? We're not I don't know. There. We're some morning guy I never heard of. But uh, J.D. sent me the tape of this fucking idiot, and uh, he's By talking way, about... who's J.D.? He's uh, just like a producer that works on his show. Oh, yet another guy. Yeah. How many guys work on Howard's show? He's got a whole team. Yeah, he's got a whole team of guys, and they write his jokes for him and his material? Do I have that right? Yeah, he's got a bunch of writers. That, that, that's impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah. Howard, invite me into your studio. Go ahead, invite me into your studio. See if you can run, you know, rough shot over me. Go ahead, see if see, see if that shit works the same way it does with other people that you have in your studio or other shows that you mention. Go ahead, bring me into your studio, you douchebag. See if you get away with that shit with me. See if I cower and uh, curl up into a fetal position like ninety nine percent of the rest of the radio community. See if that shit works with me. Go ahead, go ahead, you fucking hack. You got a team of writers and producers and a newswoman and this one chiming in and that one chiming in. Shit, I could do that kind of a show in my sleep. Howard Stern. Yeah, see if you can come in and take half my audience like you say you can take other people's audiences. See if that shit works with me. Roll the tape. Uh, I'd like to be Howard Stern because he never works. Yeah, I never work. I work around the clock, asshole. That's why I'm famous and you're not, you fucking douche. He never works, and um, when I was your age, I had 50 jobs, you fucker. Right. They're looking at and the guy goes, and not the whole span. And then the guy goes, I wouldn't want to look like him because he's so ugly. I'm so ugly, I've probably had more fucking pussy in my life than you'll ever see. You're ugly as shit. And I'm so fucking ugly. And I guarantee you, I was getting laid at 16 before I was famous. You're ugly A lot more than shit. you, who looks like fucking Skeletor, because J.D. sent me your video clip, asshole. Yeah. Some sports douchebag. I'm sitting there like, fuck you, you scumbag. The re- you know what your life is like? Here's what your life is like. At any minute, if I decide to go up against you, it'll feel like a rape when I take your whole audience. Now, in, in that regard, i got to say this, in that regard, Howard's right. Howard's right. I, 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 I hate to say it, but he's right. That if, if he decided to go up against Dennis and Callahan, he would, he would destroy them. He'd destroy them. Kaplan, it wouldn't, even be a, it wouldn't be a fair fight. Yeah. But, but, but try that stuff with me. Go ahead. But my audience is not leaving me to go to Howard Stern. I'll tell you that right now. That is just not happening. Maybe somebody else, yes. You take anybody else in the Sirius XM universe, yes. It's not happening here. Not happening. So he's far from done. I guess whoever J.D. is, J.D. Uh, let Howard uh, to see some video or audio or whatever and what did they say exactly? What, what, what got under Howard's skin so much? Uh, they play. It's coming up. Something about maybe I, I heard him say something about not working. Well, how often does Howard work now? He does uh, three days at most. Three days. And I also heard about another thing about Howard. Apparently he was in a limo one time with his wife, his current wife. Yeah. And I, I, somebody had uh, somebody had attacked his wife, his uh, attacked his wife or come up to his wife or whatever, and he let the... Uh, he let his, his, his limo driver intervene instead of Howard going over and doing something, from what I understand. Yeah, and, then, yeah, and, then, yeah, then, and then he had his dog. His dog dropped to the bottom of his fucking pool, and he did nothing. He didn't, the dog ended up dying, drowning. He didn't dive to the bottom of the pool to try to save the dog. No, the wife jumped in and saved The him. wife jumped in to save the dog? Yeah. What a real man. Well, I tell you, a real tough-talking Howard Stern. Yeah, you want to talk about a pussy. Okay, you let somebody else intervene when your wife is being accosted by somebody? What, what is the story behind that? I'm not sure. I haven't heard that one. Oh, you didn't hear that one? No. And then, and then his dog drops to the bottom of the pool, and he lets his wife d- jump in the pool to save the dog? Yeah, he wouldn't go in. 
Unbelievable. Matt Phil's in Canyon County, California. Hi, Phil. Canyon Country, California. Canyon Country, California. Yeah, what's up? Hey, big Dino Costa fan. Huge Dino Costa fan. Yeah. And also a Howard Stern fan. Lighten up on Howard, brother. Lighten up. Don't tell me what to do on my show. No, no, no. I'm not telling you what to do. Well, you just like, told yeah, me no, what no. to do. You just told me to lighten up on Howard Stern. Don't tell me what to do on my show. Okay. Well, what, do you ever? Show. Do you ever? Do you ever call Howard and tell him to lighten up on whoever he might be talking to? Uh, to be honest with you, the answer is no. But uh, like you, like Howard, very entertaining radio. Very, well, very. Well, that's good. I'm glad you find me entertaining. I'm not surprised, but. I'm glad you find me entertaining. But seriously, Kaplan, why do you think Howard has never invited me on the show? I don't know. Because he knows he's not going to be able to have his way with me the way he has with other people. That's why. But if he was smart, he would have me on his show because, as you've often said to me, I, you think that Howard would have an enormous amount of appreciation for my story in radio. Yeah, I think he'd be a great guest. And speaking of that, it, it, the movie thing. Didn't we Didn't we start this whole thing on the Facebook page with with questions about my movie, we the did. documentary? We, yeah, within that and that, that, and, and that got the that got the masses stirred up. We love that. But um, I will tell you this, and I hope Joel Franco is listening to the show. Because, Kaplan, you know this as much as I do. While I appreciated the men's journal piece by the late Michael Hastings, yeah. it did not prevent me from destroying the piece on the air. And And the same thing would happen here. If this movie does not meet with my approval, if it's too short, you know, I've had people emailing me the last couple of days ever since we started talking about this, telling me, you know, if the movie's not at least two hours, it's a colossal waste of time. And if the movie does not meet my my uh, my satisfaction, Kaplan, I will destroy it on the air. Yeah, rightly so. I will not do anything to promote it. I will destroy it. I will tell you that right now. I will destroy it. I will not be a positive ambassador for this film. All right, here's more of Howard going after the Dennis and Callahan show, the sports show, on WEEI in Boston. Play it. Fuck. You'll never know that feeling. You'll never know greatness. I listened to uh, 15 minutes of your show, and I can tell you, as an expert in radio, your show is a bore fest. Your show's a bore fest. No big revelation there. Most... Uh, I think I'd like to be Howard Stern. He never has to work. Wait a minute. Most, most sport, the Howard, uh, you and I would find common ground on this. Most of the, uh, most of, most sports radio on the air today. So Howard is only, uh, what is Howard doing here, Kaplan? He is, he is merely advocating what my, and he doesn't even listen to sports radio, yet he's advocating my position on the great majority of sports radio that it's not worth the power to blow it away. Yeah, you guys agree on that. Yeah, we agree completely on that. Again, let, let me hear a little bit more of this. And, uh, yeah, I don't work. Let me tell you, if I did one show a week, I'd still work harder than you. Because every show I do is good. Unlike your bore fest. Which, by the way, sounds a lot like the format of my show. So you can thank me for your career, you cock-sucking fuck. That seems to be getting... I seems... fucking hate radio guys. Man, he, why, such... is he, why is he getting so upset? I mean, these are people that don't matter, right? Apparently, these are the people that, that they can't penetrate the... Uh... The outer shield of, of, of the great Howard Stern. Why is he getting so... He's very upset, Kaplan. He's very sensitive. Very sensitive. Is he sensitive to criticism? Apparently, yeah. I mean, I'm loving these people on our Facebook page coming after me with knives and fangs and all kinds of things. I'm, I, I love the people who hate on me. And the other people that talk about me on the radio, show hosts, and of course, a lot of people are reluctant to even mention my name on the radio because when they do, uh, they know it stirs up a hornet's nest of activity. I mean, all you need to do is look at the Facebook page, Kaplan, and how many people. I mean, the, the, the mere mention of my name riles people up. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. I mean, my goodness. So other people on the radio don't like to mention my name too much because they, well, some do. Some do. And they, they use my name to, to, to get people to pick up the phone, which is fine. But I, I'm, I'm shocked that Howard is so damn sensitive to, to what uh, Dennis and, uh, and Callahan may have, uh, have had to say about him. Right, let's listen to more of this. Douchebags. Just admit it. I'm your king. Like yeah. the way David Letterman and, and, and everyone suck uh, Johnny's balls. You could suck mine. Yeah. Suck my balls! <laughs> right, Robin? That's right. Yeah. He, he should be sucking your cock. He should. Oh, I want to be... It's a group of idiots st sitting around. Oh, I want to be Howard Stern. You don't have to work. Eat yeah. all of my balls. The reason I'm successful is because I work my ass off, you 
fucking dummy. You stupid fucking replaceable listeners. And if I want to, I could just take your audience in a day. Yeah. I've done that to guys. Right. And you'll feel like a... Um, uh, 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 remember that? With the, who, who's that woman who just got raped in Dubai? That's what you'll know. feel like. Who was that? Spread open, douchebag. Watch me take your audience if I want it. And, and, and I couldn't live with myself being mediocre like this guy. Yeah, you know, that's that's the thing that Howard, again, Howard and I agree on something there, Kaplan. I can't, I, people say, you know, you take it too seriously. Bullshit. I have got to do, uh, stick with you, memorable sports radio art on an every single day basis. Have to. Have to. Mediocre is a word that, that never enters into my mind. And there's way too much mediocrity on the air. And too many people in radio are being rewarded, as I've said so often, for uh, mediocrity. So Howard and I have similar mindsets as far as that's concerned, Kaplan. Yeah, you guys are starting to agree on a lot of things. Yeah. That's right. Now, they, didn't he at one time have a war? Didn't he wage war on, uh, who's that stupid prick, uh, Bubba the Love Sponge? Yeah, he did. They weren't they, they? Now they're best of friends? Yeah, he had him on the channel. He went to his wedding, right? Had him yeah. on his channel. Yeah. Well, whatever. I don't know. I just, I'm just I'm surprised he's so sensitive to the criticism of it. I don't even know. It, did, did Dennis and, and Callahan actually criticize him? Yeah, they just said he, you know, they'd like to have his career because he doesn't well, work. Okay, they said he's ugly. He's ugly as sin. I mean, come on. Can you imagine being in bed with this guy? Huh? It, 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 like a big giant praying mantis for crying out loud. I don't know how his wife puts up with it. But uh, anyway, I don't know. I guess he's okay. But, Howard, you and I agree on I mean, sports radio sucks. Oh, is it bad? Man, is it bad. And then I heard through the grapevine at Sirius Kaplan that the reason that, because he is such a social liberal, Howard, is such a social liberal, liberal and so is uh, 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 Gary, uh, boy Gary Delabate, yeah. that that's why they don't want me on the show. Yeah, I can see that. Fuck them if that's the case. Give a shit. What do you think? I need to go on. Listen, I I have built what I've built here without an... I, I want Howard to know. I've built what I've built here without an ounce, a single dollar or penny being spent on, on anything promotional for this show. Anything. Okay? Not a damn thing. I've created this out of dust with my own two hands, my own strong arms. Nobody's done a damn thing. You think I need to go on your show to advance my career? I don't need to go on your show or anybody else's show. The show stands on its own merits with my name on it. How's the Facebook page thing doing so far? Yeah, hey, you're getting a lot of comments. Okay. <laughs> are the haters out? Uh, oh, yeah, the haters are oh, out. Oh, I love them. God bless you. All right, hold on. Let me check. Why is Tom Burns' face on the – on? What, what is Tom Burns doing there with a cigar in his mouth? I don't know. Someone posted the story about him beating up that cab driver. Yeah. Yeah. Paul McDonald says, uh, nine hours, you can't fill three. Yeah, well, obviously, Paul doesn't know what he's talking about there. I did, You know, I love the haters, but at least can you be factual? Jeffrey Sexton. Jeff, if that's a picture of you, you're uglier than Howard Stern. So we got 22 comments on this question. How many comments from the previous question during the same show? I think we had about 83. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. John is in Los Angeles, California. Hi, John. Hey, hey, Dino, why do you want to be Howard Stern? I don't want to be Howard. I don't want to be Howard Stern. Oh, please. You project everything on to what he does, and the moment you bring up his name, you know the last? Do you know the last time I listened to Howard Stern before hearing the tape here? Now, have you listened to the whole show tonight? No, I have not. I do okay. listen to you a lot, but not. All right. Well, not. are you going to tell me that during my show I sound like Howard Stern? You're, you're dropping f bombs like a sieve. Uh, but, well, like, hold on a second. But I, I drop f bombs f bombs every so often on my show, not just today. Well, well, you went through your reformation for about a week or two. A yeah, that that lasted ago. that lasted about twenty four hours. Yeah, but what's the what's yeah. the big deal? So I, I drop an f bomb every now and then. What what does it mean to you? Well, okay, what it means to me is you have talent. I think, look, I think Howard Stern is just the Jackie Gleason principle of a porno would get a 50 share, okay? That's Howard Stern, all right? You actually have talent. I just think it's a little beneath you. I really do. 
I think you, 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 how do you how do you think it's beneath me if I utter a profanity every now and then? And I've got to be in the mood, by the by the way, to utter a profanity. Yeah, well, it's, come on, it's not every now and again. Let's get. Well, you know, hold on a second. I, can, I I don't think I uttered a profanity on the show that I did on Tuesday of this week, and I don't think I uttered a profanity, Kaplan. You can hold me accountable for this. I don't think I uttered a profanity on this show until I started hearing Howard's uh, uh, tape. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I the thing that I don't I don't understand with these people is sometimes. And oftentimes, I think they listen, but they don't hear. They'll hear me utter a fuck tonight, and then they'll say, oh, my goodness, there he goes again. He's been at this for the last couple of weeks, when in fact I haven't been. It's amazing. And you're not telling me anything I'm not already aware of, John, out there in Los Angeles, that I have talent. I know that. But if I can't comment on Howard, I go to, because I'm commenting on Howard, I want to be. I don't want to be Howard Stern. What are you kidding me? I did that the last time I heard him live on the air, I can't even remember. Crying out loud. All right, come on. Hopefully Howard gets into some good riffing here. Go ahead. Roll it. Career sort of here or there or never where. It's just nothing. And what's it like knowing some other man can just step in and take your audience? It's a cuckold, you fuck. <laughs> Who's that? Come laughing? on, let's go right. That was Fred. That was Fred. Yeah, okay, another cast member. Now, now, radio's too easy. Now, yeah. all the wise asses, right? All the all the big shots in radio, right? They're all here. Now, yeah. come on, let's go. Who would you like to be when you grow up? Me? Yeah. Who would I like to be when you grow up? Who would you like to be when you grow up? Me? Me? Who would you like to be when you grow up? Me? Yeah. Who would I like to be when you grow up? Would you like to really be famous? Like, Would you like to really be famous? Tiger Woods? or you Tiger Woods. Would you really Would you really like to be famous like Tiger Woods? Tiger Who talks like that? First of all, these are two grown assholes. Who would you like to be when you grow up? Hey, Kaplan, let me tell you something. If he wants to talk about people who talk in a radio voice... Yeah. There's one guy on this channel he'd have a fucking field day with, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, would he have a field? He shot- In fact, I would pay to have that guy appear on Howard's show. I'd pay to have him on Howard's show. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> Who'd you like to be when you grew up? <laughs> Great stuff, man. Great stuff. And then they get on, they get on his looks, I guess. All right, roll it, God. Who would you like to be when you grow up? Who would you like to be? Who would you like to be? Like any kid. Who would you like to be when you grow up? Hey, cousin Lucy. Have you guys learned nothing? Talk like a person. That'll yeah, be the re- first. Re- I'll give you some. T- <laughs> I was just gonna say, really, man. Yeah, talk like a. Just talk like you do. You know, when you're off the air, these people that go into these radio voices, I just don't understand it. I never have. You know, man. Go ahead, roll. Tip. So when I come there and rape you and take yeah. your whole audience, right? it'll stand a chance. Maybe you'll only lose your audience in two days. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> Who would you like to be when you grow up? Who are you? Me? Yeah. Me? Who would you like to be I mean, when you grow up? Like, would you like to be famous like Tiger Woods? No. Tiger Woods? Uh, no. 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 I want to be Howard Stern, even right. though he's big and ugly. He works like three days a month. Dude, I saw you. You look like Skeletor with your shaved fucking head. <laughs> And, you know, they just... But he's also a tortured soul. Did so you read this article? As a tortured soul. You know why you're not... To- that's why you're not famous, because you're not tortured, you asshole. <laughs> you go home and think you did a good job. Listen to hey, that stop shit the you put tape. out. No, Howard is right on the money with that. He's right. I mean, how many times have I told you what, what you need to be a, 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 an effective talk show host? You've got to have something to say. You've got to have an opinion, and you have to have some asshole in you, and you do have to you do have to be a tortured soul, Kaplan. Don't you believe that? Yeah, absolutely. You got to have some it, demons. It, there. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't have demons, if you're not insane, if you're not slightly insane as a talk show host, nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody wants to listen to you. You don't have any stories to tell. You don't have any. No, nah, it's it's over. I mean, there's a place for you maybe in the in the in the food system in the food chain here on radio, but yeah, you're just always going to be one of those mundane. I mean, nobody's really going to recognize your voice from anybody else's. You're never going to say anything or be anything that somebody's going to remember. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
You have to be a tortured soul. Yes, Mario in Minnesota is on the Dino Costa show on this Thursday. Hi, Mario. Hey, Dino, listen, I actually called up looking to disagree with you uh, about a number of things, but given that you've gotten on the uh, topic of Howard, I, I have to chime in. That please, possible? please, please feel free to do so. Well, listen, I've been listening to this guy day in, day out since 97, and despite the fact that he does not entertain me, I know him inside and out, and he does have a uh, an onion thin uh he has a very frail ego. He wants to take sole ownership. Here's a guy who ad nauseum will knock his own looks. But if someone else... Well, now, hold on a second. Now, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. I'm glad you called up because I just took note of what you said. You've been listening to him day in, day out since 97. I had heard through the, 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 the grapevine, because he's, he's always constantly talking about how this guy's a pussy and that guy's a pussy. Two things that I had heard, maybe you can validate. One is that his dog fell into the fucking swimming pool and he failed to jump in and the, the, the dog ended up drowning and dying. Number two, number two, he got out of a limo one time and his wife was accosted by somebody and instead of him going over and confronting the guy and protecting his wife, he left it to his limo driver. Is this true or not? Totally true on both points. Disappointed that Kaplan, who claims to be a listener of Howard, he remembered the dog, his dog, Bianca, his beloved, uh, now deceased bulldog, well, you know, bulldogs can't swim. So the bulldog fell into the pool like a ton of bricks fell down to the bottom, was drowning. Howard slowly sort of stood up and was looking and assessing the situation, wondering what to do. Heaven forbid he fucking jump into the pool and save this fucking dog. Who saves the dog? His best. Uh, his, at the time, I think it was his fiance, Beth. How much of a cunt? With, down between your legs, a clutch with your, your hands. What is there? A pussy? Or a cock, Dana. What do you have? I got a package there, man. I got a package. Hey, you got a package. You, you got Frank and beans. You got a fucking dick, and you got some balls. That's this right. Little pussy. Let his wife. And once his wife jumped in, he didn't even jump in himself to, to assist in, in saving his dog. Now, on to. He was in his limo. Yeah. There was some in, and at the time, Howard made it very clear that it was a black, a black. My, my, Capital B L A C K it was a black homeless person mm -hmm. that was causing fucking trouble, uh, stumbling around the car, and he acts as though his wife got out, was dealing with this this uh, indigent, probably medically uh, medically mentally deranged homeless person, and he acts as though he opened up his door and somehow walking around and discombobulated, didn't quite un all of a sudden the driver had to get into the mix. I only know about this because of Howard. I didn't read this in, in page six, and maybe it's not an accurate story. Wow. So how is it that you realize that your wife is, is, is um, confronting a, a homeless person? Yeah, and he, stays in a, and he stays in a limousine, and he lets his limo driver take care of it. Big hey, man. Big man. Fred, uh, his sound guy who, who's been underpaid for years and, and uh, not appreciated fully, here's a guy who would have been proactive. Here's a guy who's hostile and angry because of the shit he's had to put up with by Howard all these years. Here's a guy who I believe would have throttled that fucking uh, homeless person and said, hey, I don't give a shit about what it is you're facing with your sorry-ass fucking life. You are, you are not going to manhandle my fucking wife. So, yeah, here's a guy who loved it. He's, got, he's full of uh, bravado when he's behind the mic. Yeah. But you know what? Out in the real fucking world, he is a little fucking pussy with bitch hips. You understand what bitch hips are and baloney tits? He's got those flaring fucking mama tits. And, and hips, he's, he's the biggest pussy in the world. All right, so hold on. Oh, here, I, here, I, let, let, I want to hear a little bit more here. Of, uh, he's going go after De Dennis and Callahan in Boston. Let's, let's all listen again. Every morning. Why do you think you're not me? You're in radio. You have every opportunity to be me. I'd love to be Howard Stern. Well, you're on the air. Why are you not Howard Stern? I'll tell you why. A, you have no talent. B, you talk like a fucking jive ass. And C... I don't even know, C. You're just boring. <laughs> That's why you're not Howard Stern. You're on the radio. Why are you not Howard Stern? I'd love to be Howard Stern, but he's fucking ugly. Yeah, maybe you can't be Tiger Woods because you can't play golf. But yeah. you're on radio. And dude, you're not any better looking than me, so you're ugly and you're not fucking Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah. swipe. So he's, he's got he's got yeah. issues. But what a great schedule he has. He, yeah. He has yeah, I got a great schedule. Maybe I earned that schedule, douche. When I was your age... I was working seven jobs, and I'm still working a few. Yeah, I, I would like to get that schedule. Yeah, because people just hand you things. 
You know why I've got that schedule? Because I can. I earned it. You dumb fuck. <laughs> Our, you know, hours, but he only works less than... Yeah, I work three days a month. That's what I work. Uh-huh. Three days a month. You, is that what I work? You want to put a million dollars on that if I work three days a month? What, what's he work? Two weeks yeah. a month? I wouldn't mind putting a dress on to be Judge Judy. That's a good... I, I got a funny joke. I'll put a dress on and be Judge Judy. First of all, you cocksucker. Judge Judy wears a robe, you dumb fuck. <laughs> yeah. Judge Judy works yeah. one week a month. One week a month. One and week a month. $45 million a year. Yeah, because Judge Judy has talent and you don't. You've been on the radio. What's the problem? Why are you not better known? Who are these idiots? Well, I don't they, even... they, they used to be Boston's number one morning sports talk uh, AM drive team, and they have fallen significantly behind their competitor in Boston. But, you know, I don't know if you were listening at the time, uh, Mario, but the reason that I've heard through the pipeline at Sirius XM, the reason Howard won't have me on his show is because, uh, because I'm a social and fiscal conservative, and, of course, he's liberal across the board, so he wants nothing to do with me. Yeah, listen, I, I, I can believe it, but how he is able to maintain that moniker of being liberal, I don't know, because, you know, here's a guy who just, he, he's on vacation, but by the way, he was pissing and moaning on Tuesday. He, he did a two-day week today, uh, this week. He worked Monday, he worked Tuesday. Half of his show on Tuesday, he was pissing and moaning about the fact that he was, would have to be up until 11 o'clock on Tuesday filming AGT, which was going live this week, America's Got Talent. And I was surprised on Wednesday, you know, heaven forbid that I actually anticipated a live show on Wednesday. It was a fucking repeat. So, I mean, come on. You, you all of a sudden want to, want to steer your show on Tuesday. Here's a guy who has a $15 million duplex apartment in Manhattan on the west side. Hey, good for him. He's earned the money and he can buy what he wants. He's got a $30 million mansion on the Hamptons. He's living an insanely good, wonderful life. Continues to make a shitload of money, but he wants to appeal to the working man because he respects the dollar, and he is so upset over the fact he's going to have to work this long, hard, uh, long, hard, arduous Tuesday. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he leads his. He doesn't clearly state to his audience, "Hey, don't fucking expect him to be here on Wednesday." No, no. He makes a priority his TV commitment to NBC. And you know what? Insult to injury. He replays his show, coincidentally, I don't know, probably more by design. He replays his show from last year discussing the initial season he was on America's Got Talent. Oh, really? What, and I'll tell you another thing. Here's a guy who, if someone calls up disgruntled as a listener, he's all too quick to say, hey, you know what? You don't like the show. Fuck off. Turn the channel. Find something else. I don't need you as a listener. But routinely, he's someone who's committed to certain TV shows where – if he doesn't like the show, if he thinks it's, you know, turned the corner that he doesn't uh, appreciate, he still remains a, a viewer of that show. So you understand the point I'm trying to make? Howard, just because I'm annoyed with some of the things you're doing, don't take me as a, a li- I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You present the show. It's, it's incumbent upon me to decide whether or not I want to stay invested. But don't quick to the draw say, if you don't like it, don't listen. Because he never addresses the criticism. Hey, uh, you know what? Listen, I like Howard well enough, but uh, what I've tried I don't to tell think you do. No, no, no. I, I like him well. I, I like him. I like him well enough. No, 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 no. I wouldn't take any shit from him, though. I'll tell you that right now. You said it all too well when you, you talked about the fetal position, because this little pussy who loves talking tough when he's listening to audio clips of someone else's show. If no. you were dealing with him face to face, this little pansy ass pussy would be not only curled up in the fetal position, he would be shivering, he'd have fucking sweat throughout his body, he wouldn't know what to do. Because he is someone who's a tough fucking talker, but uh, you know, when, when push comes to shove, he is a cunt that is, 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 is oozing some sort of cottage cheese type substance. Now listen, I, I gotta get on to some other stuff. Oh, by the way, you were asking who JD was. JD Harmeyer is a guy who's exclusively in charge of pulling clips He's got full radar. If Howard's ever mentioned on a radio show or a TV show. Oh, yeah. Hey, J.D., J.D., if you're listening, uh, J.D., hopefully you've, you've heard me uh, bash Howard enough here or say some things that maybe some other people would be reluctant uh, to say about Howard. Hopefully you, you, you give Howard this clip, you moron. J.D. starts out uh, as a intern years ago, is eventually uh, made a full-time employee, and that's all he does now. Like a, like a idiot savant, he, he covers, uh, you know, he, he follows TV shows, but... The point I'm trying to make is what bothers me about J.D. is that 
Howard exclusively, uh, not exclusively, that's the word I'm looking for. He'll talk of JJ, uh, JD lovingly as he's like the son I never had. I'm heavily invested in this guy. I want the best for him. Meanwhile, this guy is living in some shithole in Coney Island, probably making, well, listen, a semi decent living at $50,000 a year. But what I'll tell you about JD is, if you're going to draw a day, uh, J.D. and you, Kaplan, hear me out on this. Is he or is he not, at times, an integral part of the show where Howard draws upon him in a very personal manner to help steer his show forward? Kaplan, can I hear an yeah, amen? Yeah, he, he definitely is, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So he's an integral part of the Howard show, yet Howard never wants to consider the ancillary of figures behind the scenes as someone that really – deserve a salary that, you know what, it should should at least broach six fucking figures. He's a cheap fuck that is underpaid Fred for, for 30 Well, isn't, isn't that why Artie left? Because he felt he was underpaid? Yeah. Let, let me tell you something. If you ask Artie, lie detector uh, plugged up to his tits, did, were you grossly underpaid for the participation that you had on this show? Yes, of course he was. That, that's the, the part of me where it's like, you know what, He's never willing to do the right thing to say, you know what, I'm making a shitload of fucking money, but you know what, let me just make sure that all the other people involved, now, of course, you know, they're making decent living, but it's really, uh, listen, I'll get off of Howard Stern. Enough of this guy. And I really hope that JD does pull some tape of you criticizing Howard and let Howard not talk to you over a telephone line. Have you in studio and yeah. try to talk tough with Yeah, you. that's right. Howard, fly me to New York. Let's, 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 let's work this out inside the studio. You know, face to face, man to man. Oh, and by the way, one 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 guy, one compelling radio host to another. Listen, you know what? He bring he. I know about his personal life because he speaks of it. Ask him if his wife Beth O. Oh, Beth Ostrowski, who for years had no interest in taking the stern fucking name, by the way, until he had to get down on his little knees and beg like a little cunt. Hey, Kaplan, did he or did he not pretty much constantly say, "Well, I don't know. Maybe she's stern. Maybe she." Did he say that? Uh, say that again. I was, I was on the phone with the Okay. Caller. Beth Ostrowski, known as Beth yeah. O, did he or did he not pretty much have to ne- uh, negotiate her willingness to take on the Stern name? Yeah, she was very reluctant. Wow. Okay. Extremely reluctant, yet he had to beg like a little cunt over the airwaves that he should take on that name. Now, is she willing to suck dick? I only, I, this isn't speculation. This is him saying it. If a woman is proficient and talented at sucking dick, all of a sudden, the guy that says, ah, blowjobs aren't that important to me, all of a sudden, they're at the utmost importance. And listen, Dino, I know you're not a fan of ass play, but if you want a piece of ass, that's your decision. Beth is the one that's saying, no, no, don't forget. All right. Well, what, what, I, I know, what, 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 no, no, let's not go there. What he does in the, in the bedroom with his wife is his no, own No, no, but he makes it a part of it. Well, so okay, fine, fine. fine. I don't want to talk about him and his wife and their, and their sex life, but what else you got? Because i got to get on to a lot of other callers, sir. Okay, Dino, you know, look, first of all, I, I've talked to you about this before. Hold on. Why now, hold on a second. Wait a second. Just hold on a second because we're going to put you, we're going to lock you in. And uh, look at the, uh, Jim is in Scottsdale, Arizona, and he says, Mario, he says you're full of shit. Jim, welcome to the show. How are you, Dino? Good, Jim. How are, uh, uh, Mario, Mario can hear you, so talk directly to him. I think Mario should listen to the show and, and get his statistics correct. There isn't a, 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 a and I could only tell you is first hand there's been a guy on that show that's not making six figures and to make the statements and the assertions he's making about Howard Stern is ridiculous. The one thing I will tell you is that people, including yourself, and I listen to your show regularly, should be grateful that Howard created an airway for you guys to, to do the shows you do. Your show is really entertaining. You're very knowledgeable in sports, but this caller is out of his mind and Howard has stick just like you have stick, and I love the ring. Hey, hey uh, Mario, Mario, Jim, Jim here in Scottsdale says you're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let me, let me tell you something. Five years ago, Fred said Fred Norris, his sound man that's been with, with, with his right-hand man for 30 years, he said he's not even close to being able to retire with that few money. So what I'm trying to say is for someone that is such an integral part of a show that's made a gazillion dollars over the years, how is he? It's one thing to choose to continue working. He's saying with a young daughter, he has no choice but to continue working. That is a man getting underpaid. 
You have, you have no, no idea what you're talking things. about. You have no idea what kind of Fred. Oh, no, that's what I'm that. saying, you Artie Lang, Artie Lang made over a million dollars a year. This was a guy who was making nothing five years before he got on the Howard Stern show. He came on with Norm MacDonald after spending the night with him out. You sound like an ignorant fool. You have no let idea you, what you're talking you about. Fred about Norris. Wait, Artie let me say, let me add one thing about Fred Norris. Fred Norris. Fred Norris, you have no idea because there's there's one guy in the world who keeps his life private. It's him. But I'll guarantee you he... I, I think we've lost uh, okay. Jim uh, listen, in Scottsdale. Two, two things, okay? First of all, I'm only going off of what Fred Norris said. He said he's not even close to being able to retire and, and this is a guy pushing 60. And this All right, but, but don't, don't you think it's a little bit much to, to, to really be detailing in your own, on your own in terms of what you feel people are, pay, are, are, are properly uh, compensated or, or, or not properly compensated on his show? They're apparently still working on his show. So, First of all, Howard makes a living out of counting other people's money. He's, he's so quick to say that Comedy Central and MTV, they're cheap fucks, they don't pay. So if he's going to criticize other people, I'm going to turn it right around to him and say, you're not paying people to an Artie Lang opt out at 800,000. Now, listen, if you're a working stiff, you might say, you know what? I'd love to be making $800,000 a year. But all I'm trying to consider is all the money at play. Howard Stern got an $80 million bonus his first year at Sirius. And he can't see fit. He can't recognize. He can't realize he's got such a colossal fucking ego. He only wants to say is I don't need anyone to do my show yet. You know what? I continuously see X number of fucking people propping this guy up to do his show. I don't want to hear a Howard Stern could read the fucking phone book and keep a captive audience because I've never seen it. He's right. someone who's dependent upon his crew uh, like well, you wouldn't and, believe and, now. And, 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 and no, Mario, I got to run. I got to run because I, I, I got to get other people in here. And that's one of the criticisms that I've had. I mean, listen, the, the, the fact of the matter is I drive this show four hours every single day and night on my own almost exclusively. Almost exclusively. I don't make phone callers as not nearly as much a part of my show as as other shows that involve themselves with sports issues and items. People get angry at me, Kaplan, because I'll go an hour, hour and a half just you know commenting on three and four issues over that ninety minute uh, time frame without welcoming on a phone call. Yeah, they get upset. They get upset because they're used to getting on and you know being on a sports show within you know five, ten at the most fifteen minutes. So no 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 I listen I and by the way speaking to the the caller in Scottsdale Arizona I've said on many occasions here with Kaplan as my witness and many of you as well that if not for Howard Stern there is no Sirius XM yeah you said it several times many times I've made that clear many times my point is this I don't fear not only his show but any other show I'll go up against I'll put my body of work and and my radio show against anybody in this country. And not think two seconds about it in terms of, of, of developing an audience and a significant one at that. Pete is in San Francisco, California. Hi, Pete. What's up, Dino? How are hey, you? Pete. Hi. 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 I want to know why a couple months ago, I think in May, you were stuck in Howard's talk about, about Howard TV and how you wanted to, you wanted to copy that, that the, you know, and do a Dino TV thing. And now you're ragging the fuck on him. I mean... You got some fucking nerve and some fucking balls to, to, to talk about someone who has really fucking helped you out in, in, in giving you a fucking job with, on, on serious radio. I mean, you know, if he, you said if he wasn't here, none of you guys would be there either. The serious wouldn't be around. Hey, I mean, here's, here's what I'll say. Hey, here's what I'll say about that. Number one, Dino TV had nothing to do with Howard TV. Dino TV would have looked and sounded and felt like nothing uh, that, that Howard TV sounds like. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, that's number one. Number two, number two. while, while I will admit and acknowledge that Sirius XM is not here if not for the efforts of Howard Stern and his show, okay, I believe that Sirius XM has moved beyond Howard Stern. That is, that if Howard Stern broadcast his last live show today, Sirius XM would go on into the future and would thrive and would continue to add subscribers every single quarter. Back with more Hour 3 right after this.